In this lesson, I want to spend a little more time with tables, um, just to finish up a, a couple of, of loose ends. Uh, the first thing is um, th there's a, a, a special way of handling some events uh, when you have a custom row that uh, need to be discussed. Um, and I also want to introduce the notion of a suction within a table. And, uh, and this uh, this use of sections is something that is specific to iOS, as is a lot of the uh, different table um, operations that we've been looking at um, here in, in the last few uh, podcasts. So uh, let's start off here with um, taking a look at the behavior of the table. So if I select um, the row, and actually let me make sure that I recompile this. Uh, when... Um, when we select a row, um, there's uh, a number of different uh, views that are contained within, uh, within the row. And uh, the element that's actually receiving uh, the event uh, might not actually be the row. Uh, so the click may be detected by a label or might be detected by um, uh, an image and so we need to be able to deal with that uh, within our code so that um, they all believe that they are part of the um, the row. So let me show you what actually happens with uh, with this. If I click on the row uh, then we do the transition over to the next view and then we see uh, research animals uh, printed there. But if I select the um, uh, the label you know, you'll see that the transition happens, but there's no label displayed. And the same thing with the image. Uh, and this happens to, to be because of uh, the, uh, the way that the event is being, um, uh, being uh, um, handled. So we have this click event in our event listener. And it's expecting that um, it should be a row, but uh, if the... Uh, if the label is the uh, object that receives the event, then uh, it won't be processed um, properly. So actually, if you look here, I've got uh, some code that displays um, which object is being um, clicked on. And so if I click on the label, you see that the label is saying that it was clicked. And if I click on the image, uh, the image says that it was clicked. Okay, so we need to fix this. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to add um, to our uh, table view row objects, uh, specifically the images and the labels. We're going to add um, a parent uh, property. And I'm going to make that parent property self. So essentially, since these images and these labels are contained within the parent, the parent of these uh, of these objects are self. So let me add that then to each of these. So we're going to do parent self, parent self. Okay. Uh, another thing um, that I wanted to mention here is that URL uh, that's being used here in the image view, that is actually a deprecated property. It should actually be image, and so I'm going to change that also while I'm here. Okay, but our main our main task is to make sure that we handle this uh, this parent um, event. So, what I need to do here within my event listener code is I need to add. And by the way, from the code that I used before, I had essentially moved uh, this code into the loop and added it as uh, an event handler. Actually. I can actually move that uh, outside, but I'm basically saying here's I'm defining a event listener for each one of the rows that's uh, that's created. Okay, so what I need to do is detect whether or not um, the source uh, is a, um, a list when row. Actually, source dot class name. And if it is, I'm going to set um, the row equal to source. And actually, let me def let me do something here. Let me declare a row outside of the 
the conditional. And then the, so this is the this is the regular case where we click on something, it is indeed a row, uh, and then uh, we just assign a row to be the source. If it isn't, then uh, what I need to do is grab the parent. So if it ends up being something like an image view or a label, then I know that I've I've actually clicked on the contents of the row. So I'm going to set the row then equal to e dot source parent. Uh, so now in, instead um, row is being set to the um, to the parent object. Okay, so that should handle my issue here. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, so if I select on just the row portion, then I um, I see my label. Now if I select on the image, there's the label. Perfect. Um, and on selecting the label. Okay, so uh, so now um, the entire row, not just the empty spaces, but everything within the row is reacting to the event so that everything is viewed as being uh, an actual uh, member of the row rather than just being um, separate. So, so now this event listener will be able to handle everything that um, is being done. Okay, um, another thing that I wanted to show real quickly is uh, the use of, um, of groupings within a table. And I have this piece that's, that's uh, um, commented out. Um, if I just say grouped, uh, if I set the style for a table as grouped uh, and then add things to the table, um, I get an effect in the table that, uh, let's take a look at this, <clears throat> makes, the, uh, makes the table appear uh, as follows. And if you have multiple things within the table, no, multiple sections within the table, then, uh, then you get this nice effect. So I uh, wanted to show real quickly how to, uh, how to actually implement that. Um, so, um, so I, if you have just <clears throat> one section, just uh, setting your uh, uh, your style to grouped will uh, will do the job. But if you want to do uh, multiple sections, then um, you need to do a couple of things. So first, uh, we'll need to create a section, and I'm going to do this: ti dot ui dot create table section and then um, in this part where we're actually adding um, uh, the uh, the rows to this table data array uh, we're going to change that so that instead we're adding the um, the rows to the section um, and then um, the one, the last piece that I need to do is I need to add the um, uh, I need to add the sections to um, to an array. So I'm going to add um, section. Actually, it's table data push section, <clears throat> and then the table data gets um, set as the the data for the uh, uh, for the table. Okay, so to make sure that we actually see the effect that we want, I'm going to uh, actually create two sections. Our section equal section two. Same thing. And um, I'm also going to push. two on here uh, and then um, I'm just going to put a if statement here if I mod two is equal to zero we'll push to uh, we'll add the section to the uh, or the row to the first section else section dot section two dot add row 
Um, so now we'll end up having two sections uh, within our table. So, so here now I have two sections, um, uh, one with um, research animals, media, and share, the other one with take notes and create behavior. Uh, so the main thing here then with, uh, with doing sections, you create multiple sections, you, do, uh, you add your rows to the sections, and then you add the, the sections to an array um, that are used to, uh, as the, the data for your table. So anyway, so that's um, that's the way that uh, that sections work. So two things here in this uh, this particular um, uh, lesson. The first thing uh, when doing uh, custom rows, uh, in order to make sure that events are handled properly, uh, you need to do something like what I did here of adding a parent to uh, the objects that are added to the table view row. Um, and then using um, an if statement to essentially differentiate between whether or not you've selected a row or you've selected something within the row. And if you do that, then uh, if you selected something that's within the row, you just push that up to, uh, um, to um, the container object, um, which is identified by the parent, and then use that to, to handle all the rest of the event. <clears throat> and then the other thing is uh, with sections, uh, you create the multiple sections, add the add the rows to the multiple sections, and then add them to the uh, to the table. And I think I've said that a couple of times. So, anyway, that concludes this lesson.